You may have noticed a lot of programs allow you to open a file by dragging it onto the applications icon. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to handle drag and drop file input within your programs in Visual Basic. This can be done quite simply using command line arguments. Command line arguments are a fantastic way to add external data into pre-compiled applications. There are many ways to insert this data into our applications. This video is going to focus on dragging and dropping files onto the application's executable or shortcut. However, another way arguments may be provided, for example, would be to add them onto the shortcut. You may have done this before. To obtain the command line arguments in Visual Basic, you can use the environment.getCommandLineArgs method which returns the argument as a string array. Before you begin, you'll need to grab a copy of Microsoft Visual Studio. The free community version will be perfect for this. I am using the 2017 Enterprise Edition. If you have an older version of Visual Studio, you should have no problem keeping up either. That being said, let's get started. For this guide, I will be doing the task in Visual Basic. You can find all the timestamps within the description. Okay, so for our first project, we're going to print all of the command line arguments to the screen. So to begin, we're going to declare a variable to store our command line arguments in. So I'm going to call mine command line arguments as string array. Now that we've created a variable to store our arguments in, we're going to loop through that and print each of them to the screen. So for each argument as string in command line arguments, console.write line argument. Then after our loop, I'm going to do a console.read to stop our program automatically closing when it's done. Okay, so we'll go out to build it, and now we'll go run it. So I've moved my executable to the desktop, and I've also found four photos. I'm going to select all of these photos and drag them onto the executable. As you can see, the file path for all files is shown. However, the command line arguments also contains the full path of the executable too. The executable's path will always be the first element in the command line arguments array. To work around this, we can simply use a for loop rather than a for each loop. Let's jump back into Visual Studio now. All we're going to do is replace our for each loop with a for loop starting at the first element and not the zeroth. So let's delete our for each loop. For i as integer equals 1 because we're starting at 1 not 0 to command line arguments dot length take away 1 and console dot write line command line arguments i so again we'll build the project and run it I've updated the executable on my desktop with the one we've just made as you can see, when I drag the files onto the executable, it only shows the file paths of the images and not the location of the executable. Now that we're able to display the command line arguments, we can perform tasks such as utilizing basic file operations. I'll demonstrate this by making the program show some information for each of the files before moving them to a new location. Okay, so to begin we're going to go into our for loop and delete what we had written before. Now because we're using some file operations, we're going to import the system.io library. And then going back down into our loop, we're going to create a new file info and we'll use this to display our file information. And within here we'll go the current command line argument. And now we're going to write the code to show some file information. I've chosen to display the full file path, the file name, the file extension and the file size.
And with that done, our program should now display each of the file informations on a new line. And now we're going to write the code to move the file. So I'm going to begin by specifying a file location of where the files are going to be moved to. And now the code to move the file. I'm also going to add a separator for each of our files. And a way to tell when our program's completed. Again, we're going to go up to build our project, and now we'll run it. Before running the program, I created the location I specified in my program and opened it. As the program doesn't check before running to see if the directory exists, you'll need to create the directory specified in your code too, to prevent the program from crashing. Now when I drag the photos onto my program, we can see that not only all the information for each file is displayed in the console window, but the files also have moved to their new location. From here you should be able to improve and expand on what I've covered in this video. For example, you may want to include a check before processing a command line argument to ensure it contains a file path before performing any file operations, as the command line arguments may not always be file paths. That concludes this video. Please like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe for more programming tutorials.